Up first, the Louvre. First constructed around 1190 as a fortress, this famous museum is home to countless art treasures, from Renaissance masters such as Leonardo da Vinci. But it was also home to the French royal family before it became a museum, and legend has it that 16th century queen Catherine de Medici had her most trusted henchman, Jean Le Couture, murdered here because he knew too many of her secrets. His name translates to John the Skinner and was called this due to his occupation as a butcher. The legend tells us that Jean's angry ghost returned from the grave to haunt the royal palaces at the Louvre after the paranoid queen ordered one of her knights to dispatch him with his sword. According to this lurid tale, as Jean died he cursed the French royal family. The spectre has been dubbed the Red Man of the Tuileries because he appears to unsuspecting visitors dressed in red. Unfortunate French queen Marie Antoinette was said to have been visited by the Red Man of the Tuileries the year before she was beheaded in 1793. Another famous figure from French history who reported seeing the ghost was no other than Napoleon Bonaparte, who claimed to see him in 1815. Visitors to the Louvre today need not fear this apparition, however. During an insurgent uprising in 1871, the Tuileries Palace was set on fire and the building was destroyed. Legend has it that a red face wreathed in purple smoke could be seen from one of the windows as the building burned. It would seem that Jean Le Couture's ghost disappeared along with the building, for the red man of the Tuileries was never seen again. Built in the 12th and 13th centuries, Notre Dame Cathedral is without doubt one of the greatest wonders of medieval Gothic architecture. With its superb stained glass windows and flying buttresses being a major draw for tourists visiting the City of Lights. Given the age of this impressive structure and its past and present use as a place of religious worship, it is little wonder that Notre Dame is home to several phantoms. Modern day visitors have reported hearing voices whispering to them within the walls of Our Lady of Paris, saying things like, come to save me and help me. Perhaps this is the voice of one of the many people who have taken their own lives there. One ghost who is said to haunt Notre Dame Cathedral is a woman who, in 1882, threw herself over the railings of one of the towers and was impaled on the railings below. Witnesses have stated that they have seen the ghost of this unfortunate soul wandering around the top of the tower near the cathedral's infamous medieval gargoyles. Little is known about this unfortunate spectre, other than her initials MJ. The mysterious and elegantly dressed MJ presented herself to cathedral staff on the morning of October the 5th, requesting access to the towers. Alas, unaccompanied females were not permitted at this time without a chaperone and given that she was said to be around 20 years of age, the woman found herself in need of an escort. The story goes that she was befriended by an elderly lady, who was also visiting the cathedral, and managed to convince the woman to accompany her to the roof. It was the afternoon by this point and torrential rain had started to pour, so MJ's elderly companion decided to take shelter inside the bell ringer's room. Suddenly, a pierced shriek could be heard by bystanders, as MJ flung herself from the tower and fell 60 meters to her death. The London newspaper, the Pall Mall Gazette, reported that this tortured soul was literally cut in two by the railings. The young woman had left behind a handkerchief with the initials MJ embroidered on it. As for the elderly companion, she mysteriously disappeared that day and was never found. Some visitors to the cathedral swear they have seen the spectre of the elderly woman wandering around the gargoyles along with her wayward young charge. The Cimetière Père Légès takes its name from the priest who acted as confessor to Louis IV. 
This relatively new cemetery was built in 1804, on the very spot where the priest's house stood, and covers a staggering 44 hectares, making it the largest cemetery in Paris. It is the resting place of some very famous men and women, making it yet another popular tourist attraction in Paris that also happens to be haunted. Many stories abound as to the famous phantoms of Père Lachaise, including tales of Jim Morrison. The lead singer of the American rock sensation The Doors was buried in this cemetery after having a fatal heart attack brought on by heroin use in 1971. Morrison's gravesite attracts multiple visitors each year, and there are several fans who believe to have seen Morrison's ghost walking around the grave, or even standing next to his own headstone. In 1997, rock historian Brett Meisner visited Morrison's grave and had his photograph taken there. It was not until 2002 that Meisner noted a strange blur in the photograph and an analysis of it showed the eerie white figure of a man standing in the background, his arms outstretched, just like Morrison on stage. Morrison himself was well known to have believed in the afterlife, having seen the ghost of a Native American who was killed in a car accident when he was just a boy. Another well-known apparition who haunts Père Lachaise is French novelist Marcel Proust, who was buried there in 1922 after dying of pneumonia. Proust's former lover and lifelong friend, Venezuelan composer Reynaldo Hahn, is also buried at the same cemetery. Apparently, Proust had wanted his lover buried alongside him. When Hahn died in 1947, he was laid to rest in a grave close to Proust, but not next to the writer. Visitors to Père Lachaise state they have seen the sad figure of Proust walking the grounds of the cemetery, looking for the grave of his old love. Beneath the city of Gay Paris lie an estimated 200 miles of pathways, where it is said that the skeletal remains of a staggering 6 million Parisians have been laid to rest. The skulls and bones of the dead line its walls, in a macabre display for all who visit. It is therefore of little surprise to learn that the Paris catacombs are also one of the most haunted sites in all of Paris. Urban legend would suggest that visitors to the catacombs do not stay there after midnight, for this is the time when the ghosts of the dead speak to the living and try to lure them deeper into the endless winding tunnels of the catacombs until they are lost. Only a very small section of the catacombs are open to the public, but this does not seem to deter the adventurers from going beyond the safety zone. This is the unfortunate fate that awaited the catacombs' most famous ghost, Philibert Aspert. Aspert was a doorman at a Parisian hospital during the French Revolution. In 1793, he decided to go in search of some Chartreuse liquor in which he believed to be stored underneath the hospital gardens, accessible via the catacombs. The foolish Aspert took with him just one candle. When the candle eventually went out, he was homeless, lost, and must have wandered into the dark until he died. Sadly, his remains were found just meters away from an exit, with the bottle of liqueur still in his hand, 11 years later. His remains were identified by the hospital keyring they bore. It is said that the ghost of Philibert Aspert haunts the catacombs for one night of the year, the 3rd of November, the day he went missing. The hapless hospital worker is today remembered as the protector of the cataphiles, or those who love the catacombs. Just like Notre Dame Cathedral, the Eiffel Tower is sadly a popular place for people to take their own lives. The Eiffel Tower Society claims that 349 people have taken their own lives there since it opened in 1889. It is therefore somewhat surprising that the most well-known ghost who haunts the Eiffel Tower was not a suicide, but rather she was murdered. This haunting dates back to some time during the 1920s when a young couple ascended the tower one evening. 
The young man took his life by surprise by popping the question and asking for her hand in marriage. Sadly for both of them, she did not want to marry him and she said no. According to one version of the story, the man was so heartbroken and enraged by this rejection that he pushed her over the railings and she plummeted to her untimely death. In another version of this ghost tale, the woman stepped back in shock at the unexpected proposal, lost her footing and fell to the ground. Either way, ever since that fateful night, visitors to the Tor Eiffel have reported sightings of a young woman dressed in 1920s apparel, who walks the upper levels of the tower and then vanishes into thin air. Similarly, visitors claim to have heard the final sounds made by this luckless lady, uncomfortable giggling, <laughs> presumably at the unwanted proposal, followed by terrified shrieks as she is pushed from the tower to her death. Those that have heard these terrifying sounds say they repeat over and over, as if the woman is trapped in the ongoing cycle of her own horrifying demise. With all the incredible history that has occurred in Paris, it is no surprise that spectres and ghosts are frequently seeing. The poor souls mentioned here are just the tip of the iceberg. For more videos of the most amazing forgotten parts of our history, be sure to subscribe to the Intrigued Mind channel, like the video, and leave your suggestions in the comments below.